As in-person trade shows come roaring back in 2022, it is the perfect time to talk about how you can make an impact at these events without spending tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars exhibiting. I don't know about you, but I still have nightmares about the sequence of events that happened to me personally two years ago regarding trade shows. Sit back and relax, boys and girls, maybe grab a snack or your favorite bevy, because I'm going to share a personal story before we get into the intended content insights. In the first week of February 2020, I was speaking at the Nutri Ingredients USA Sports and Active Nutrition Summit. During a networking breakout session, a group of colleagues and myself started to talk about the current Chinese supply chain hiccups with this coronavirus thing and how it basically extended the shutdown for the Chinese New Year. No big thing, we all kind of thought, so I went on full speed ahead with my plans to attend the Natural Products Expo West in a few weeks, then take the red eye across the country and have more meetings at the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. I ended up having a project completion deadline kind of line up with one of my LA-based clients, and I flew in to the Natural Products Expo West kind of trip a few days earlier. As I was presenting the project findings to the client, I could feel the phone vibrating like crazy in my pocket. It was kind of above and beyond the normal activity. I won't kind of play and say that I'm the most popular person in the world, but as an entrepreneur, obviously I get a ton of business emails, text messages, things like that. So I kind of asked to take a short break. These messages were from industry people letting me know that they had canceled the trade show as exhibitors were getting set up or maybe had already finished their setups as the show was starting the next morning with the Arnold Classic holding press conferences that they would continue. I readied myself to kind of swap some flights around and still travel to Ohio. That night before my flight, I woke up maybe a million times thinking about different scenarios of what could be happening across the business landscape. Yes, maybe to a fault, my brain works best by feeding business or kind of economic data through it first to figure out how drastic personal life will be impacted. My perspective on this is if you follow the money, you always kind of see things more clearly. Those scenarios that were running through my mind that night were scary, and I decided the next morning to cancel the trip to Columbus, Ohio. It ended up being a good decision as they canceled the show last minute, which was basically the start of that kind of shelter-in-place, restricted living period we all dealt with throughout March 2020, kind of April 2020. Now, I've been back to in-person trade shows already, but most events have stayed remote or kind of digital until the last few months. For a lot of you that work at or maybe own a functional CPG brand, being involved at trade shows, be that B2B or B2C, or heck, even having the opportunity to live sample at events or retailers is extremely important. You think about B2B events like the Natural Products Expo West or maybe Fancy Food Show. These are perfect places to meet with dozens or hundreds of potential wholesale accounts. Now on B2C events like maybe the Arnold Classic Expo or maybe the Mr. Olympia Expo, these are where you can create major trial and build awareness for your consumable functional CPG products. With all this kind of pent up demand and the desire to revenge spend like it's going out of style, you likely want to jump back into exhibiting anywhere and everywhere possible, right? I get it, but this could also be an emotional response that makes for messy, cost-inefficient decisions. Stop and think about this for a second. The world has fundamentally changed because of the COVID-19 effect. So, Why do the same old, same old with your experiential marketing at trade shows? I recognize the trade show experiential marketing hacks that I'll discuss aren't a kind of one-to-one swap for exhibiting, but 
they will hopefully provide a springboard for you and your team to challenge the established plans. I'm also not saying you should totally abandon trade show exhibiting, but maybe there's an equally impactful way to meet your goals through different experiential marketing methods that are much less expensive. Finally, it's also important to remember that each trade show is unique and your strategy should be aligned with your brand identity and tailored to fit the makeup of the attendees. Before I get into jamming about a handful of trade show experiential marketing hacks, I want to thank the sponsor of this content, Ghost Lifestyle. This is definitely a company that does trade show and event experiential marketing different from the functional CPG industry standard. You can see examples of it posted inside their YouTube Behind the Brand series that has documented Ghost Lifestyle's growth from the very beginning. I'll link the Ghost Lifestyle YouTube channel in this content's description if you kind of want to check that one out. And if you're interested in learning more about the product portfolio of Ghost Lifestyle, maybe you're in the need to pick up some new supplements, you could do so at ghostlifestyle.com. Now, since it would be impossible for me to jam about trade show experiential marketing hacks that are universally applied to every single industry, I'm going to stay in my lane and speak from the perspective of the functional CPG industry. So the first hack that I want to talk about is that you first should research who the trendy coffee shop is that's within walking distance to the convention or the event hotel zone. This will be a natural traffic point for attendees in the morning and a perfect place to reach the same target audience for much cheaper. Seek to partner with that trendy coffee shop to have a signature limited time offer, drink made with maybe your whey protein powder, your plant protein powder, and kind of as a version like 1A and 1B to this idea, you could also do the same thing with like trendy juice bars with some of your powdered supplements or with bakeries, again, with some of your, maybe your protein powders. The second hack that I want to talk about, and this is kind of an old school B2B conference idea that I've done several times throughout my career, but instead of being an attendee, volunteer to work the registration. Attendees will see you right when they walk into the trade show. It will also give you the opportunity to kind of spend quality time with them as they are getting their credentials. I'm sure event organizers would hate this idea, but Speaking from firsthand experience, you can definitely do both value accretive activities to your business and still handle your duties at the same time. The third hack that I wanna talk about is about making a viral piece of content at the show. To do this effectively, make sure that you have the basics down of understanding the trade show flows of traffic and maybe the layout for shot selections. You also need a trained camera person and likely an actor or actors to make everything super entertaining. Finally, storyboard out what you hope to achieve, but let the natural energy guide you towards entertainment gold. Maybe it's an entrepreneurial spoof video that is kind of industry focused, or it's an unlikely comedian that seeks to heckle attendees. This can kind of get out of hand quickly. I've seen it a number of times. So make sure you're being respectful and know when things are going south to cut your losses. The fourth hack that I want to talk about is similar to kind of that first hack that I talked about, but I want you to seek out the go-to gym or maybe the gym that's closest to the convention center or the event hotel zone. Partner with that gym to create a physical experience that's tailored to your brand. Since you're outside of the convention center, you don't have to deal with the union rules and all that kind of fit you in a box kind of garbage that creatively stunts your experiential marketing efforts. Now you might need to look at like permits if you're gonna go crazy, but this also could be as easy as inviting your most popular influencers to an event at that gym that you take over and set up a cool immersive photo experience. This idea is really a specific example of a bigger experiential kind of pop-up concept that brands could utilize. Now, the final hack that I want to talk about is maybe the most involved because of the complexity. It involves blanketing the surrounding area of the convention center and inside of the trade show. But 
like I said, without exhibiting. The focus is on combining a vague yet intriguing set of analog touch points that lead to a digital information capture. This might require some legwork on allowable methods by local government, but the goal is to create a multi-touch point memorable experience. Since this is maybe a bit confusing to visualize, let's jam about a specific brand idea. So for this example, I want to talk about the Liquid Death canned water brand, and the event is hypothetically Natural Products Expo West. So the first touch point as an example could be flyers outside of the hotels, convention, and natural walking flow traffic alerting attendees of a don't miss event tomorrow. Maybe that don't miss event is a filming of a high budget motion picture that has a cheeky name and huge name celebrities. The goal is to really get people to be excited and interested in seeing what is going to happen. The second touch point would maybe be staging a scene of that motion picture that's aligned with the brand. Maybe it's a funeral procession outside the convention center at opening hour for the death of our world from all the plastic water bottle waste. Now the third touch point maybe would be to have a collection of individuals dressed in undertaker outfits walking the floor and engaging with people around brand missions. The fourth touch point would be handing out product as the convention ends on the final day that has instructions to see all of those touch points kind of come together in a story and learn more about the brand. This is really for the big swingers that have a strong brand identity. Don't try and kind of drive a Ferrari when you don't even have your license yet. That turns into really expensive mistakes as you can imagine. But I just want to end on some quick final thoughts. These were obviously only five examples of millions of different ideas that you can come up with. But the goal with this content was to hopefully get you to think outside of the typical binary thinking of exhibit or not at these important industry trade show events. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my short-term goal of 2,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that slightly less than 70% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But just want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.